Recently, there has been a buzz surrounding an application that offers many features akin to those provided by video card manufacturers to boost frame rates without requiring additional resources. This application called Lossless Scaling caught my attention when I discovered it could be used with emulators, prompting me to give it a try. Before diving into my results, it's important to note that Lossless Scaling comes with a minor cost and is currently exclusive to Windows 10 and 11 via Steam. One standout feature of Lossless Scaling that has excited many users is its frame generation capability. Frame generation, also known as frame interpolation, is a technique employed by NVIDIA and AMD to predict intermediate frames in animations, thereby increasing frame rates with minimal impact on GPU performance. To effectively utilize frame generation, certain conditions must be met. Firstly, you need to cap your frame rate at half of your monitor or TV's refresh rate. Most emulators support this feature, but tools like RevaTuner can help if not available natively. Secondly, your monitor's refresh rate must support the desired frame rate. So for example, if you want to reach 60 frames per second, then you have to have a screen that's 60 hertz or higher. Lastly, maintaining a consistent frame rate limit is crucial for optimal performance. Insufficient overhead or fluctuating frame rates could diminish the effectiveness of frame generation. So with all that being said, here are my results. Initially, I tested with my Intel Arc A380 GPU. Starting with black on the PCSX2 emulator, I achieved 120 frames per second at 1080p resolution. Moving to 7th generation games like Breath of the Wild on CMU, however, I encountered inconsistencies. Despite lowering the resolution to 720p and the frame rate to 40 frames per second, the A380 struggled to maintain the overhead necessary for a consistent 120 frames per second. On RPCS3 with MotorStorm Pacific Rift, the A380 fell short of consistently hitting 60 frames per second, though I noticed an overall improvement in frame rates. Lost Odyssey on Xenia Canary, which previously didn't support 60 frames on the A380, surprisingly achieved a consistent 60 frames per second with frame generation. In summary, while the A380 showed some limitations in fully leveraging frame generation across all tested games, it managed occasional success. Moving on to my RTX 2060, I decided to jump straight to 7th generation titles. Breath of the Wild saw better performance compared to the A380, though consistency remained an issue at higher frame rates. MotorStorm Pacific Rift, already capable of 60 frames per second with the 7800X3D, struggled to maintain 120 frames per second. Drakengard Guard 3 showed improved consistency with frame generation, but still experienced occasional frame drops. Now I vowed never to test Killzone 3 again until I upgraded my video card, but 30 frames per second is not as taxing on the GPU with this title, and so I decided to give it a try with frame generation. While it wasn't consistently hitting 60 frames per second, I still felt like it fared much better than my original tests. Gran Turismo 6 is nowhere near in a playable state in my opinion, but it can at least go above 30 frames per second, and so I didn't think it would at least hurt to try. This track was probably the least demanding of the ones I tested and it's still struggle in certain areas. There are also current issues with the game that are exacerbated when using frame generation, so honestly I would stay away from this title until there are more fixes. God of War Ascension does manage more times than not to maintain 60 frames per second, but there are certain areas where drops get pretty bad, so I was hopeful frame generation might improve this, but unfortunately, it was pretty much the same result. Uncharted 2, while seeming to improve from my original tests, also lacked consistency, but overall, I honestly feel like frame generation does a better job with frame rates on this title. Out of all the games tested, Infamous was the most consistent with frame generation. I did find that certain areas of the game did drop the frame rate, but it surprisingly did better than I initially thought it would. Overall, my experience with Lossless Scaling's frame generation has been positive. It effectively enhances frame rates in emulation scenarios, although a GPU with ample overhead is recommended for optimal performance. Now, I did leave out a few caveats, as these are going to be common across any game you use with frame generation. One of the biggest downsides of frame generation is input delay. There can also be some noticeable artifacting, though through my testing I barely noticed it, especially when games ran at a consistent frame rate. Lastly, frame generation can only work with window or borderless full screen, 
And when using window especially, this can affect the size of the screen even if you max it out, so just keep these things in mind. In conclusion, I'm impressed with the potential that lossless scaling frame generation offers for game enhancement and emulation. I look forward to seeing how it evolves and plan to continue testing it with future hardware upgrades. For now, this is the core, your entertainment techie, signing out.